One more time, one more time. You know we are blessed to be in God's service. So one more time, oh, one more time. Well, one more time, one more time, one more time, one more time. You know we are blessed to be in God's service. So one more. Oh, one more time, Lord, and I feel good, and I feel good, and I feel good, and I feel good. You know we are blessed to be in God's service. One more time, oh, one more time, Lord, one more time, one more time, one more time. A uh, one more time, you know we are blessed to be in God's service. One more time, oh, one more time, Lord, a uh, one more time, 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 you know we are blessed to be in God's service. One more time. Lord, oh, one more time, you know that I feel good, and I feel good, and I feel good, and I feel good. You know we are blessed to be in God's service. One more time, Lord, oh, one more time, Lord, oh, one more time, one more time, oh, one more time. One more time, one more time, you know we are blessed to be in our service. One more time, oh, one more time. Good morning, good morning. God has blessed us once again to come and worship and praise his holy name. And so we thank God for blessing us to see another Sunday morning. And if you are visiting with us this morning, we want you to know that you are indeed our honored guests, and we are happy that you chose to worship with us this morning here at the Hanging Mouse Road uh, Church of Christ, and we want you to come back and be a part of any and all of our services, and we will recognize you uh, at the end of services uh, on today. Um, in the way of announcements, I actually just have one announcement that I'm aware of, but two. So, uh, Foster Warrior Blue today, now you can see I got my, no, I forgot my blue on. <laughs> In my defense, I was out of town last week, so I forgot, <laughs> I forgot. But you all look good in your blue, and coming from the health committee, they want to say thank you for wearing your blue on today. Uh, Kenny, what was that blue for? I forgot. Colon, colon rectal cancer. So thank you for wearing your blue. Give yourselves a little applause. You look good in your blue today. All right, also in the way uh, of announcements, we're just a short uh, week and a half, two weeks away. We're looking forward to a great weekend. Our Youth and Young Adult Weekend is vastly approaching. So we're looking forward uh, to that on March the 22nd and 23rd uh, and through the 24th. To that note, uh, send a note out all parents. If you could just see me after worship, all parents for just about five minutes. And also any young adult, if you could see me after uh, service as well between the ages of 18 and 45. If you just see me after worship, it won't take but five, 10 minutes max after worship service regarding youth and young adult weekend. Also, we want our youth to be mindful of and our parents to be our youth conference. Mississippi State Youth Conference is coming up as well, uh, May the 31st through June the 2nd, be at Colin Community College. So be mindful uh, of that as well. That is all the announcements that I have at this time. If you would, just stand and let us greet your neighbor, one next to you, tell them you love them and you're happy to see them and give them a big smile and hug. John here, that's not a big smile. <laughs> I got a little leak under my underskin. 
kitchen sink. I, don't, I think it just might need to be in our lot of water if I put the bowl under there, the kitchen. I, I, I think it may be coming from the dishwasher, maybe. I don't know, from that, uh, it's on the side, it's coming out of the side of the bottom. It leaks when you run the sink on it, just leaks. On its own. Thanks to what? Water line. Pushing it on it. Wait a minute, I figured out. Yeah, I got it. Okay, I got it. Okay. Uh, I know Tuesday I'll be working in, in the area. Tuesday, Thursday, and Friday next week I'll be. Call me there in the afternoon. Be there in the afternoon. Okay. Okay. All right. I'll be there. Okay. All right. Sunday. Next Sunday. Uh, uh-huh. Lucretia Nichols going to be there. Trust me. Okay. We're going to stay on Zoom for a while. Okay. A lot of things in person, but I don't know what we're going to get out with the sister back out here at 5 o'clock. Uh, yeah. <laughs> we're going to play it back here. Yeah, right, right. Yeah, you're doing right. <laughs> All right. Okay. You got to open the press. I once was lost in sin, Lord, but Jesus took me in. Well, and then a little light from heaven filled my soul. I'm so glad that he paid my heart in the love. Well, and wrote my name above. Well, now just a little talk with Jesus makes me whole. Come on and let us have a little talk. With a Jesus, let us tell him all about us, and he will hear us. His cry, and he will answer by him. Now, when you feel a little prayer for you, well, let your heart to heaven is up. If you do, you will find a little talk with Jesus, it makes it right. Oh, well, come on and let us have a little with it. Now, and let us tell them all about us, and he will hear us. And he will answer my end. Now, when you feel a little breath for him, well, let your heart. If you do, you will find a little talk with Jesus makes it right. All right. Hey, man, let's go to our God in prayer. Our most wise and gracious heavenly Father, Father, we thank you once again for allowing us to come out on this day, Father, to worship thee in spirit and in truth, and they knew it's your grace and your mercy. Father, we come thank you for Christ giving us life that we all may have the life, and have life more abundantly, Lord. Father, we thank you for the church of Christ, we die in pressure, your precious blood. You have given us an avenue of prayer, to Father, we can come to you at any given time, confident and assured, to Father, that you were here. <clears throat> And that's our prayers, not according to our will, but according to your divine and purpose for each of our lives. We thank you for the new purpose, Father, the purpose we have in our uh, head of mind when he created us for you and your good. And Father, we thank you for the power you give us to choose, for we choose a wise that we travel life's journey. 
recognize that, Father, there's nothing we can do without you in our lives. You're God of all situations, whether relational, physical, spiritual, emotional, financial. We know you are your very present help in our time of need or trouble. Father, we thank you, Father, for giving us all our sins. Those things we have done, that's contrary to your will. We ask that you remember no more. And Father, we pray you as you bring for people as you bring your word on this morning. Words that will give us all a better understanding of God's will and God's way. That we can learn this already better today, Father, than we did on yesterday. We thank you for all that you do, Father. Just continue to bless us. Keep us in your tender loving care at all times. We be careful to give you all the praise and all and glory to your holy and divine name. It's in Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Down at the cross where my Savior died, and it was down where from cleansing from a sin I cry and will them to my heart, Lord, it was the blood of life I'm a singing glory to his name fresh I'm a singing glory glory to glory to his name what a precious name I'm the word of matchless name, the Lord, read to his name, precious name, well, he was there to my heart, the Lord was the blood, the blood of a life, I'm singing the Lord. Read to his name, precious name. Glory to his name, the wonderful name of Jesus. It was Jesus that brings us to this portion of our worship service because it's a time that we reflect and remember the sacrifice that was made on our behalf. The Lord's Supper was instituted in Matthew chapter 26. We find in 1 Corinthians chapter 10 that the cup that we drink is the blood of Christ and the body, the uh, bread that we partake of is the body of Christ. And then in chapter 11 of 1 Corinthians, we also find that uh, this we do in remembrance of him. So let us take this opportunity to reflect and remember the fact that Christ was willing to die, that we might live, and let us give thanks for this opportunity. Our God and our Father, we thank you for the privilege and the opportunity to be a part of the family of God. We know that you did for us what we couldn't do for ourselves, so we come and say thank you. We ask for your blessings on this bread as we partake of it. And we ask for your blessings on this cup as we drink it, that we do it in remembrance of you. For all of your pain, your suffering, your sacrifices, your commitments, but most of all, the great love that you showed toward us. We again say, thank you. It's in the mighty name of Jesus that we pray. Let us all say, amen. Thank you, thank you, Lord. I want to say thank you, thank you, Lord. I want to say thank you, Lord. Oh, the way. Just want to thank you, Lord. You've been so good, you did. So been so good. Well, you've been, you've been so good. Oh, Lord, you. Yeah. 
you save him, save my, save my soul. Oh Lord, you save my soul. Oh Lord, you save him, save my, save my soul. And Yes, and I to think I want to thank you, Lord. Praise your name, we pray. Praise your, your name. Oh, Lord, we praise your name. celebrating the greatest sacrifice that has ever been made to recognizing the greatest gift that's ever been given. This is our opportunity to give back a portion of what God has blessed us with to the uplifting of thy kingdom. But the greatest example of giving is Jesus. We also recognize in 2 Corinthians chapter 9 verses 6 and following. But this I say, he which soweth sparingly shall reap also sparingly. And he which soweth bountifully shall reap also bountifully. Every man according as his purpose in his heart, so let him give, not grudgingly or of necessity. For God loveth a cheerful giver. And God is able to make all grace abound toward you, that you always having all sufficiency in all things may abound to every good work. It sounds to me like a great recipe to never be broke. Let us take advantage of our opportunity today to give because God first gave while we were yet sinners. But he gives us the opportunity to have whatever we want. Let us pray. Our God and our Father, we again say thank you. Thank you for allowing your scripture to reveal to us that giving is not a burden, but an opportunity. We also understand that whatever it is that we desire, we should first be willing to give it. We know, Father, that you gave your son. And we just pray that as we give of our monies, our time, our efforts, that you'll bless this collection for the upbuilding of thy kingdom. We thank you for all your blessings, because every good and perfect gift comes from you. It's in the name of Jesus that we pray. Let us all say, amen. Come and go with me to my father's house, to my father's house, my father's house, to my father's house, my father's house. We'll come and go with me to my father's house, well, there is joy, sweet joy, joy. Joy and come and go with me to my father's house, to my father's house, my father's house, to my father's house. Well, why don't you come up and go with me to my father's house where there is joy, sweet joy. Joy, joy, and peace and happiness there in my father's house, in my father's house, my father's house, in my father's house. Well, well, peace and happiness.
happiness there Here in my father's house where well, there is joy a sweet joy joy and come and go with me to my father's house to my father's house my father's house to my father's house well why don't you come and go with me to my father's house well there is joy sweet joy Joe. Good morning. Scripture reading for this morning will come from Philippians chapter 3, verses 12 through 14. Again, it will come from Philippians chapter 3, verses 12 through 14. And it reads, Not as though I had already attained, either were already perfect, but I follow after if that I may apprehend that for which also I am apprehended of Christ Jesus. Brethren, I count not myself to have apprehended, but this one thing I do, forgetting those things which are behind and reaching forth unto the things which are before. I press toward the mark for the prize of the high calling of God in Christ Jesus. I have just read Philippians 3, verses 12 through 14. May God bless the hearers, readers, and especially the doers of his own divine word. Without you, Lord, well, without you, Lord, oh, Lord, I can't make it, well, without you, Lord, without you, Lord, without you, Lord, well, without you, Lord, I can't make it, I can't make it, no, I can't, without you, Lord, listen, let me tell you, there was a time, well, in my life, I, Lord, I was living in sin, well, and it was without crime, oh, but I stopped to wonder, yeah, oh, Lord, um, uh, what I went wrong, oh, oh, oh to make my praise. So hard, so hard to run without you, Lord, without you, Lord, yeah, without you, Lord, I can't make it, I can't make it. Oh, Lord, without you, Lord, yeah, Lord, without you, Lord, oh, Lord, without you, Lord, said I can't, I can't, Lord, um, oh, I can't make well, without you, Lord, listen, let me tell you, there was a time well I was living in sin. Well, along came a Savior. Let me tell you what he did. He took me in. Well, said he died on the cross. Oh, Lord, uh, for my sins. Yeah, that's why I love him. Yes, I will love till the end. Without you, Lord, without you, Lord. Yeah, we 
without you, Lord. I'm, I can't make it. I can't make, can't live one day without you, you Lord. Yeah, I'm so glad I found you down, you Lord. I'm, yeah, without you, Lord. I, each and every breath, Lord, I, oh, Lord, I can't make it, yeah, without you, um, without you, Lord, without you, Lord, yeah, Lord, without you, Lord, I, I can't make it, yeah, Lord, I can't make it, yeah, Lord, without you, Lord, think about what he's done for you, yeah, without you, Lord, you gave me a roof over my head, yes, without you, Lord, you put food on my table, oh, I can't make no I can't, no, I can't without you, Lord. One more time, one more time, I say without you, Lord. I'm, I don't want to do it without you, without you, Lord. I said I can't, I can't, I can't, I can't make it, oh, I can't. Without you, Lord, without you, Lord, we can't make it. Without you, Lord, my God is awesome. He can move mountains, keep me in the valley, hide me from the rain. My God is awesome, He heals me when I'm broken, strength where I've been weak and forever He will reign. My God is awesome, oh, awesome, oh, awesome, oh, awesome. Well, my God is awesome, oh, said, oh, Awesome, oh, 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 awesome. Well, my God is awesome. Said the Savior of the home, the giver of salvation. By His stripes I heal. My God is awesome. Today I am forgiven. His grace is while I'm living. Praise His holy name. My God is awesome. Oh, awesome. Oh, awesome. Oh, awesome. Well, my God is awesome. Oh, awesome. Oh, awesome. Oh, yeah. Somebody, he's worthy. Uh, he's worthy. Said he's worthy. Uh, said he's worthy. Uh, Lord, you're awesome. Yeah. Awesome. Yeah. And I know that he's mighty. Said he's mighty, Lord, you're mighty, Lord, you're mighty, Lord, you're all, yeah, yeah, yeah. 
know that he's great. Said he's great. Said he's great. Said he's great. Oh, Lord, you're awesome. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I know that he's mighty. Said he's mighty. Said he's mighty. Said he's mighty. Do you believe he's awesome? Yeah, yeah, he's my protector, my protector, my protector, my protector, the Lord Jerome. Yeah, 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 he's my deliverer, 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 deliverer. He delivered me, he Lord, you awesome. yeah, yeah, I know that he's awesome, he's awesome. said he's awesome, do you believe he's awesome, he's awesome, oh Lord, you awesome. yeah, 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 he's my provider, be my provider, my provider, my provider, a Lord your ours. I'm so glad that you are. Yeah, I know that he's great. Said he's greater. He is the great I am. He's greater, a Lord your ours. Yeah, yeah. Well, my God is all said that he can move mountains, keep me in the van, he will hide me from yeah, my God is awesome. Today I am forgiven. His grace is while I'm living. Grace is his holy name. My God is awesome. Oh, 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 my God is awesome. You believe it. Give a hand clap of praise like you really believe it. Yeah. Oh, you can do better than that. Oh, you can do better than that. I know, I know y'all look tired. Y'all lost the hour, but God is great. He woke you up this morning to spring forward. So let's spring up, spring out, and let our voices shout. Good. Y'all ready? Y'all ready? I'm going to trade my earthly home for a better one, bright and fair. Where can I live to prepare a man, oh Lord, for his children again? Yeah, well, I join him again, dead and land. Tears, no sorrow, a can and beef. When a wing and I receive my mansion, a mansion, row, row, banner. Lord, I want a mansion, oh Lord. A robe and a girl in the glory there. I know that a peace and love it will always about forever. Let, let it be where you're from. That's up where well, the Lord please reserve my mansion. I want a robe. Yeah, I want a man. man Mansion, I want a robe and a hidden glory there is peace and love it will always abound forever let, let me will your throne serve well the Lord please reserve Mansion robe and a 
them. Don't you know that the weather there is always up? Their sun's shining day and I'm no cold, no rain. I will fall for the sunshine ever bright. Oh, well, I need no heavy garments. I'll just wrap my robe around and a wing and I receive them. I want a run, yeah, I want a mansion, and I'm, well, I want a robe and a crown in the glory there. I know that peace and love, it will always abound forever, let, let me Lord, your throne, sir, said, oh, Lord, please reserve. I want to roll up and cry. Don't you know that my head is bowed in the bloody now from the work that I've tried to. Oh, Lord, but one day I'll be rewarded with a crown so bright and new. Oh, Lord, I wear smile so bright for there be no cause for a frown of when I receive him mansion yeah I want a mansion I want a mansion robe and a crown and glory there I know that peace and love it will always forever let, let me wear your throne serve well Lord please reserve Mansion Road One more time And I want a man I want a mansion Well, a robe And I'm In glory There I know that A peace and love It will always Abound forever Let up Let me Well, now you're Thrown Around, Lord, please reserve my mansion, mansion robe and crown. Amen, amen. Big boy was all into it. He's showing y'all how to praise the Lord. It didn't start until he got his mic. <laughs> <laughs> Really love the Lord. Well, oh, I really love the Lord. You don't know, you don't know what He's done for me. He gave me. Victory, I love him. Said I love him, and I really love the Lord. I really trust the Lord. Said I'm. I really trust the Lord. Oh, and I really trust the Lord. You don't know, you don't know what he's done for me. He victory and I love him said I love him and I really love the Lord you don't know you don't know what he's done oh cause you 
walked away when he gave me the victory. I love, say it again, I love him and I really love the Lord. And he has brought, he has brought me from my body long away. Bishop comes up. <laughs> Give <him his> cue. <laughs> Give <him his> cue. <laughs> Sometimes I think he forgets, but I don't. <laughs> well, oh Lord, oh Lord, I have come, uh, I come to receive, to receive a mom. Lord, I patiently waiting, patiently. Oh Lord, for the harvest, for the harvest is now. I've got the Hebrew. I got the Hebrews 11. Well, I got a faith, faith to know a mom. Well, it is mine. Oh, mine. Oh, Lord. Well, hey, Lord. Oh, Lord. I have a, I've come to receive, receive them. Said I'm patiently waiting. I'm patiently waiting. Lord, for the harvest, for the Hebrews 11, well, they got a faith, they didn't know her mom, well, and it's mine, oh, mine, oh, Lord, well, I'm standing on his promises, I'm insisting on his word, well, everything, oh, Lord, that I need, well, I believe he gave it to me. Well, the he's the father of real good pleasure. That the kingdom get in line. Lord, it is mine. Oh, mine. Oh, Lord. Well, I believe in him. Well, the great things. Yes, he promised me a long time ago. Yes, I know that I'm going to get it, y'all. Why? Because the Bible, it tells me so. Well, no, he's the father of real good pleasure. That the kingdom get it right. Yeah, hey, 
harvest time. How many of y'all waiting? Blessing will come. It will come. Amen. We're thankful that we serve a mighty, mighty good God. And he is not good some of the time, but God is good all of the time. And all of the time, God is good. Even when we are not so good, God is still good. And we are thankful for that. If you know that you serve a mighty good God and he has been good to you, say amen. amen. He's brought you from nowhere to somewhere. Say amen again. Amen. Set your feet on solid ground. Say amen again. Amen. And if you love the Lord, say amen again. Amen. Love the Lord's church. Say amen again. Amen. Love the Lord's church. Turn to your neighbor. To the neighbor, I love you. It ain't nothing funny about my love. It ought not be anything funny about the love that we have one for the other. We ought to have a godly love that is a love that is spite, in spite of and not uh, because of. Our love folk in spite of what they say uh, to us and in spite of what they even do to us. We ought to still love them. Amen. And sometimes it's hard to do but God commands us to love one another and even to love our enemies is that all right praise god want to thank our praise leaders and believe in us in a spirited praise amen i just watched my grandson he got his fresh cut amen mama gave him a fresh cut and boy he didn't he just standing up there until he got the mic uh, Chris found <laughs> back in the bag when he got his mic, he starts uh, start going. And, <laughs> amen. Amen. The Bible tells us to train him up in the way they should go. Amen. Amen. He's, he got it in him. Amen. He got it in him. And that's that's something we we need to uh recognize, all of us who are parents, that make sure we uh uh inform them or put them in a position where they are they can appreciate uh, spiritual things they can appreciate giving praise and unto God they can appreciate because you see these songs out there you know they got the, the, the devil songs out there and they they getting in those songs amen why we can't uh, uh, sing the songs of Zion? Amen. Why can't we teach them to sing the songs of Zion? And I, let me say this. When we come, we have to recognize that God is a spirit. And they that worship him must worship him in spirit and in truth. And uh, when you worship in spirit, it's going to be, be reflective uh, on your face. Uh, amen. When you worship in the spirit, your, your mind is not somewhere else. Amen. When you're worshiping in spirit, you're going to open your mouth and you're going to give him some praise. 
Amen. You're not going to be just sitting up there like, you know, wondering what's going on in the place. Why you said preacher? Because I saw some of y'all, amen, y'all weren't in the spirit. You have to be in spirit with the Holy Spirit. Is it all right? That's what God designed it to be. And I love Ephesians tells us about uh, singing, you know. And when you're in the spirit, it tells us that we are to sing and make melody in our hearts uh, to the Lord. Amen. How many of y'all just, just glad you're here today? Amen. How, how, many, how, many of y'all, how many of y'all giving God the praise for you being here today? How, how many of y'all just thanking God for being here today? Amen. In spite of what's going on in our lives, we ought to still give praise and honor to the God of heaven. I want to welcome those who are on live screen and uh, our guests and our visitors uh, here today uh, who do not share with us in our religious conviction. We want you to know that you are on the guest and we appreciate your presence and trust that something will be said to give a better understanding of God's will and what? God's way. God has but one way. And he says, I am the way the truth and the light that no man uh, can come to the Father except uh, by me. And I just want to let y'all know, I'm sure enough thanking God. Yeah. Praise the Lord. A couple of days ago, I just I couldn't even walk. Couldn't even get out of the bed. I had so much pain. Amen. I started to call. So, well, you know, a word, you know, the devil's always negative. And he told me, said, well, you better call the show. You better call somebody and let them know you ain't going to be able to preach. Uh, 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 Sunday and, uh, and then call the folk going on a trip to to uh, uh, Dallas, God's Love Bank and let them know they just going to go without you. Amen. Amen. But but I tell you yeah, amen. My God is able. Yeah, yeah. You know. Yeah, yeah. And this is what I'm going to talk a little bit more about uh, uh, this morning on this uh, on this subject in, in Philippians. Uh uh, Philippians 3, uh, what we read, and we'll continue our thought. But it, it's just great to be here, great to be alive, and great to understand we serve a mighty good God. And I know this spring break, and you, you probably, some of you still wrestling, struggling, you know, because you lost the hour. But you really hadn't lost the hour. All you had to do was just go to bed one hour early. Amen. That's all. That's all you had to do. But well, I may be talking to the choir because y'all, y'all prepare. How many of y'all brought your Bibles today? Amen. We won't be long. And the, the brother sure says we want to be strong. <laughs> Amen. Turn your Bibles to Philippians uh, chapter 3. Um. Uh, We'll begin with verse number 12. It says, not as though I had already attained, either were already perfect, but I followed after, if that I may uh, apprehend that for which also I am apprehended of Christ Jesus. Brethren, I count not myself to have apprehended, but this one thing I do. Forgetting those things which are uh, behind and reaching for unto those things which are before. In verse 14, I press toward the mark for the prize of the high calling of God in Christ Jesus. Is that in your Bibles? Let us pray. Our Father and our God, it's once again that we come before your th throne of grace. We, we're thankful for all the things that you do and that you are doing, that you will do for us. And we, we are thankful for, most of all for Jesus Christ who gave his life that we might have life. We're thankful for the church of Christ uh, which he purchased with, us on, our own, with his own blood. We're thankful for the gospel of Christ, which indeed has the power to save the whole world. 
And Father, we're thankful for the gift of the Holy Spirit who lives inside of us, who teaches us, who guides us, shows us things to come, bringing back to remembrance the things that we studied, but also gives us the power to be victorious in life. And Father, we ask now, ask now that our, your word uh, will be in our hearts, that we will receive a meekness and a grafted word that is able to save our souls. Use me, Father, as a vessel to proclaim your word. May the words of my mouth and the meditation of my heart be acceptable in that sight. O Lord, my strength and my redeemer. It is in Jesus' holy name that we ask it all. Let the church say amen, amen, amen. And I want to thank those brethren that led us in our devotional service as well. Uh, those who led in the prayers and uh, reading the scripture and also sitting at the table. Uh, just good that we have brethren, young brethren as well to be willing to serve. In this passage, we have been talking about the Apostle Paul being a great example of purposeful intent as it relates to spiritual growth. And the word that we have presented this year is intentionality being intent or have an intent in everything that we do. And this simply means that, uh, that you have a goal, you have something that you're trying to accomplish and you are focused on making whatever it is that you intend on happening. And, and, and as I said, the Apostle Paul is a great example of that because uh, he was going through a great deal of persecution and suffering for the cause of Christ. But because he had an attitude, a certain kind of intent, a certain attitude, he was able to continue and to focus on his goal. And so we gave you uh, several ones, and we're gonna deal with this last one again today. Some of the things that we uh, didn't get to say last week, we wanna say uh, this week. Uh, <clears throat> of course, you know, Paul had, uh, point number one was Paul had a what? A sanctified dissatisfaction. Number two, Paul had a what? a single-hearted devotion. Number three, Paul had what? A straightforward uh, direction. And number four, Paul had a solid determination. You see, uh, we'll get to number five next week, but you got number five. What's number five? Paul had a <laughs> strict discipline for the, those who didn't get it the first time. Uh, Paul, in his uh, example as we using him, had in his last number four, a solid de determination. He says in verse 14 that I press toward the mark for the prize of the high calling of God in Christ Jesus. This word press means, it gives us the idea of intense endeavor. It is intense effort. He, he was determined to accomplish his goal. And the thing about Paul was that the same zeal he had when he persecuted the church was the same zeal he had in serving Christ in the church. I need to say that again. The same zeal and the same determination 
he had before he obeyed the gospel of Christ, he had that same zeal uh, in serving the Lord. Uh, and it's important that uh, we don't lose that, praise the Lord, because God rewards folk who have faith and who are determined to do his will. Over there, I, I guess I need to show you in Acts chapter 9. Go over there in Acts chapter 9. You'll find that Paul was very diligent in persecuting the church. He had a great deal of zeal. And, and God saw this zeal. You see, God can use people who are zealous. They may be zealous for the wrong reason, but he can, once he point them in the right direction, once they are taught the word of God, he can use that same zeal in serving him and building his kingdom. Is that all right? And so we see this example of Paul in that he had zeal, he had determination uh, to stamp out uh, those who uh, call themselves a uh, Christian. He, he wasn't passing. I said he wasn't passing. See, we got too many in the church who are passing. Amen. You, you were alive, why, in the world, but when you come into church, praise God, uh, you, you're dull and, and dim and... <laughs> But, 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 but look at Paul, look at Paul. He, he, he had a zeal, he had a determination uh, even to stamp out uh, the, the, those who were uh, 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 in the church. He made havoc of the church. Listen, listen to what the Bible says in, in uh, Acts chapter 9. Hey, I, I'm trying to get us to read the Bible more. Amen. Acts chapter 9, what, what did the Bible say? And Saul. And Saul. Yet breathing. Yet breathing. Out threatening. Out threatening. And slaughter. And slaughter. Against the disciples uh, of the Lord. Against the disciples of the Lord. Went unto he, the high priest. He, he was breathing out threatenings. He, and slaughter against the disciples of the Lord. He, he was against uh, what was going on. He was against Christians that were were in the way. Amen. Uh, because it was different from the Mosaic dispensation. It was different from the law. So Christianity is different and Paul thought they were wrong in what they were doing. So he was going to stamp it out. And he was threatening the slaughter against uh, the Lord's church. And the Bible says he did what? Went unto the high priest. Went unto the high priest. And desired of and him. And desired of him. Letters. Letters. To Damascus. To Damascus. To the synagogue. Uh, and the synagogue. That if he found any of this way. If he found any of this way. Whether they were men or whether women. Whether they were men or women. He might bring he them might bound bring unto them Jerusalem. Bound into Jerusalem. I wonder if Paul, uh, some of y'all been back in that day, he found you. <laughs> would you <laughs> he found you. Would you Would you be uh, willing to, to not deny the Lord? Willing to say, I am a Christian. I'm a child of God. You do what you will. Do what you want because I'm committed and I'm dedicated to Christ. And he, amen. But there were a lot of folk back then denied. Amen. They denied the Lord. They denied they were followers of Christ. Praise the Lord. But 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 Paul was zealous. The point I'm making, he was zealous. And he went on this journey uh, uh, because he got these letters. And he went on this journey and came near Damascus. And suddenly there shined around about him a light from heaven. And it, it fell on He fell to the earth and heard a voice saying unto him, Saul, Saul, why persecutest thou me? Amen. See, he didn't know when he was persecuting the church that he was persecuting Christ. Because the church is the body of Christ. So we have to be careful when we talk about one another, how we treat one another, because it just may be that the Lord is saying, why you are persecuting me. Amen. But you know, uh, 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 he asked the question, watch this. And he, he said, who, there's some good preaching here, but I'm not going to deal with all of it. Uh, 
He answered and said, Who art thou, Lord? And the Lord said, I am Jesus, whom thou persecuted. It is hard for thee to kick against the pricks. And he trembling and astonished and said, Lord, what will you have me to do? Watch this. And the Lord said unto him, Arise, go into the city. It shall be told thee what thou must do. Listen, he asked the question, Lord, what will you have me to do? That sounds like a strange question to a lot of religious folk today. Because they'll tell you there ain't nothing for you to do. All you have to do is just believe. Yeah, you, and then, you know, uh, they, when they say that, there ain't nothing for you to do, uh, uh, then, but they, then, then they say, all you got to do is believe. <laughs> well, that's doing something. <laughs> Amen, that's doing something. And, and so uh, Paul at the time saw, he asked him, what will you have me to do? And Jesus acknowledged that by saying what? Arise, arise, and go into the city, and go into the city, and it shall be told thee, and it shall be told thee what thou must do, what thou must do, not should do or want to do, but what thou what must do, must do. Now the question is, why didn't Jesus tell him what to do? <laughs> Why, why didn't Jesus tell him what to do? He asked Jesus, what will you have me to do? Jesus is the Savior. Jesus know what he has to do. But Jesus told him, go into the city, and it will be told you what you must do. And the reason Jesus said, uh, go into the city, and it'll be told you must do because Jesus had put the word in earthen vessels. Yes, yeah. Amen. Je Jesus, Jesus couldn't and wouldn't because he had given the treasure of the gospel in the hands of earthen vessels, and this earthen vessel in this case was Ananias. So he went down and down, so he was there praying. Yeah. He was there praying, on the praying, and had a uh, question God, why would you send him there? I'm gonna get to where you want me to be, but uh, uh said, we done heard a lot of things about this man. <laughs> this, this man is tough. Yeah. This man is 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 is, is zealous. Yeah. This man has been going into folk houses. And, and, and bring folk out uh, and cast them in prison. You mean to tell me you want me to go to him? <laughs> God let him know. Oh, he, he's all right now. Yeah, I done humbled him. Praise the Lord. I've humbled him. He 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 he's praying, you know, for deliverance. But 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 God told Ananias he was a he is a chosen vessel. Watch it. Verse 15. The Lord said, the unto, Lord him, said unto him, Go thy way. Go thy way. For he is a chosen for he vessel, is unto, chosen me, vessel unto, me, unto me. To bear my name. To bear my name. Before the Gentiles. Before the Gentiles. And kings. And kings. And the children of and Israel. children of Israel. For I will show him. And I will show him. How great things. How great things. He must suffer. He must suffer. For my name's sake. For my name's sake. God saw that zeal. He saw, saw that, that energy, saw that commitment and dedication. And he said, uh, he, 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 I'm going to show him. I'm going to show him how great things he must suffer for my name's sake. God saw his zeal. Even he was praying, praying, praying three days. But you go over there and ask. We know what he had to do. In Acts 22, 16. 
But I, I, want, you to see, I want you to see the zeal. God doesn't want us to be passive. We're too passive in things, even in things of the world. You know, they vote coming up, right? A lot of us passive about that. Say they don't make no difference. Hey, the Lord, we, we passive. But if you don't open your eyes and get some wisdom, you see, we go, we going back. Some folk taking us back. The way it was, and I, I, I'm talking to young folk now. Young folks, see, you know, I'm of age. I ain't got too much to worry about 30, 30 years, 40 years from now. I'll be in glory. <laughs> Y'all gonna have to do this, to endure what's, what they're trying to put on you now, and turning back all this other stuff. See, what what we have to learn, able to to. Uh, Two uh, groups. They are folk who do good and folk who do evil. This war, we're trying to departmentalize it, but it's simple. If it's not good, it's evil. And there is a, a spiritual war going on in you, each of our lives, but it's also going on in the world. It's, it's the devil against God. It ain't, it ain't no in between. Ain't no in between. It, it, there's a fight between evil and good, whether it's in the church or in the world. And Satan is the God of this world, and he has the individuals working to destroy you and this world. And ain't no complication about it. They're giving me a, a subject to speak at the national. I speak at the national, and uh, in Acts, uh, it's in Acts chapter, no, it's in Hebrews chapter 11, uh, and. Uh, uh, the subject is uh, faith so simple it cannot be confused. Faith so simple cannot be confused. And that's what, uh, that's what I'm talking about. That's all I appreciate. But, but I want to get us to understand what's going on politically. Is a war we're going on between evil and good. It, it, it's not difficult to choose. Y'all still here? In, 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 every day we have to choose from evil and good. Every day, every day in our lives we have to choose evil or good. We choose evil or good. It's, good. it's the choice we make. We have to decide. Because it's not difficult. And so when he talked to uh, Ananias and he talked to Paul, told him to go to the city and shall be told you what you must do. Right. In Acts 22, 16, watch this. It tell, and why it, tear us down? Who, Ananias asked him, why are you waiting? Arise. Arise. And be now he said, why are you waiting? You've asked what to do. And he says, arise. So evidently he must have been on his knees. Yeah. Praying, the Bible says. But, you know, sometimes there's something to do. Prayer's good, but there's a do with prayer. Yeah. Amen. All that pain, I was praying, calling on Jehovah Jireh. <laughs> Man provided and speaking scriptures by his stripes, some heal. Praise the Lord. But you know what I decided to do? I believe he healed me, but I decided to go to the mercy room. 
<laughs> I said, I'm going to the mercy room and let them check me out and and and, and hope that you know every, you know whatever it is and you know but you know I still believe I was healed. Yeah. Yeah. Amen. It was something for me to do. <laughs> Man, I could have just sat there with all that pain and laid there with all that pain. Lord have mercy. Checked out everything, said, you know, everything did, blood test did, see, scan, all, everything. And he came to a conclusion. He brought me and gave me a diagnosis. Now, this really is a joke. He gave me a diagnosis. And he said, You getting old. <laughs> Your body ain't like it used to be. You're going to have some muscle problems. You're going to have some joint problems. You're going to have some shoulder problems. You're going to have some back problems. <laughs> and so what he prescribed to me, the medicine that I was already taking, just had a, a pain patch, and but I already taken, you know. Lisa was being a nurse, she gave me some of the she was taking when she had some pain. Yeah. <laughs> Got my own prescription. Yeah. Amen. But the point I'm making is that we have to do something. Yes, we believe that God is Jehovah Jireh. He is my provider. Yes, we believe God is Jehovah Rapha. He's my healer. But we got to do something. Yeah, we're expecting uh, big harvest and, and don't understand that you, you got to do something. You got to yield. But God to give out. Y'all done got me off on this now. Uh, 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 but I, I want to show you that after he was baptized, watch this. He said, arise and do what? Be baptized. Be baptized. And wash away thy sins. Wash away thy sins. Calling. Calling. On the name of the Lord. On the name of the Lord. And after he was baptized, Paul used that same zeal. He had for persecuting the church and serving the Lord. That's why over here in Philippians, he, he, he said, I press yeah. toward the mark. I'm in prison. I'm, I'm having struggles. I've been having struggles ever since I've been baptized, but, but I, I'm still pressing. I, I've been having people dislike me, put me down. I've had my haters, but I'm still pressing. I've had people uh, talk about and call me everything but a child of God, but I'm pressing. I got struggles in my home. I got struggles on the job. He said, but I'm pressing. Why are you pressing, Paul? Because he said, I'm pressing, what, toward the mark for the prize of the high calling of God in Christ Jesus. Paul is saying that the reason why I'm pressing, I got, I got a goal. I, I got a goal to accomplish. Yeah. That's why I'm pressing. And that goal is a high calling mm. of God. Mercy. Yeah, yeah. You see, some of us, but you got to be determined to reach the goal. We can't be passive. See, there, there are two ideals that we have. And both of them false. One is let God do it all. And the other one is I'm going to do it all. Amen. You see, God can do, I want to put it, anything. Yeah, you remember the class. God can do anything, but he won't do everything. He always has something else to do that will show our faith and trust in him. He's going to take care of it, but he got to see where you are in your faith. You know what the doctor told me? He asked me, he said, no. I made him laugh. He looked at me and said, 
Are you eating good? I said, Doc, you can look at me and tell me I'm eating good. He just bust out laughing, and gave me a fist bump, and dropped the mic. And he told me, this is what he told me, that cut down on your portions. I said, well, he said, cut down, to put, cut down on your portions. Cut down on your portions. Everyone told me, cut down on my portions. I said, Doc, what you saying is, I can't go to them all you and eat buffets. <laughs> I'm just being real. But, but the thing of it is, it, it, it's something for us to do. God is not going to do it all. Yeah. Sounds, uh, the slogan said, uh, 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 I think they said, you know, let go and let God. Sounds good. It sounds good. Yeah, you can let go and let God, but ain't nothing going to happen unless you do something. And you do it by faith. Praise the Lord. I made up my mind just like I could have been determined not to show up today. I could have took that voice and said, well, no, you don't need to show up. You don't need to do this. You don't need to do that. You, you, your back, you having all this pain in your back. You can't hardly stand up. I know I, I can relate to old folk who have back pain. No, that's pain I never had. <laughs> before. But Paul was determined. And because he was determined, see, I pressed. Now watch what he says, and I'm going to let you go. He says, it was a high calling. See, a high calling, I'll put a category, is a holy calling. Yeah. Good. And it's a heavenly calling. Yes, sir. You see, some of us have, have a, understand we have a high calling, but we got low living. I'm going to say that again. We got a high calling, but we're living low. God wants to have a calling, a life above the ordinary life. Not not because he called us by the gospel and he calls us with a high calling so that we can be an example to the world. If I'm living like the world, I'm not living a high calling. It's a low calling. So, so for Paul says I got a high calling, and I'm looking at the mark because my calling is that I could become more and more like Christ in my life. That, that's, that's my calling. My calling is to be sanctified and holy and be separate apart from the world. That's my calling. My calling is that I must give myself to the cause of Christ, seek ye first the kingdom of God and his righteousness. That's my calling. I like the way Colossians 3 put it. We're going to go and try to close uh, in Colossians 3 and verse 1. You see, I think in, it was in 1 Corinthians uh, 9 and 6, where uh, we was at the men conference this past uh, couple of weeks ago, and uh, one preacher he, he dealt with uh, a second Corinthians, first Corinthians nine and six about how that we used to, you know, such was some of you. You remember that uh, uh, at first Corinthians uh, six nine, and, and we're going to Colossians. But I want you to look at what he says in uh, 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 first Corinthians six nine. He says. Know you not, it's living on a higher level than the world. Because yeah. he says, love not the world, neither the things that are in the world. It tells us what the world, the lust of the eyes and the pride of life and the lust of the flesh. We do not love those things of the world. And, and, and he says that, know you not, don't you know? that the unrighteous shall not inherit the kingdom of God. That's what I'm saying. Don't you know, be not deceived, nor, neither fornicators or adulterers, 
nor adulterers, nor infinite, nor abusers, they're talking about homosexuality, of themselves with mankind, nor thieves, nor covetous, nor drunkards, nor relevers, nor extortioners shall inherit the kingdom of God. Why? Because we're living on a higher level. We're living on a higher level. We have a, a higher calling and we have a higher, uh, uh, a holy calling, a heavenly calling. And then he says, and such were some of you. He said, but you've been washed. Now, watch this. Let me say this. It's important that a person be baptized. To wash their sins away. And some people say, well, I get baptized, but they don't never see him no more. So baptism is a means to an end, not an end in itself. It's to get rid of your sins. And some folks, you know, they say, well, I, I've been baptized. I was baptized down there in, you know, uh, 20, uh, 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 12. But we hadn't seen you since 2012. The Bible tells us that we must go on to perfection or maturity. And that we are to live our lives on, on, on a higher level. Why? Because Jesus says that we are the light of the world. The city that sit on the hill that cannot be hid. And, and, and so let your light so shine, he says, so, so that uh, men can see your good works and, and they can glorify the Father. Is that all right? Amen. So we can't be passive in Christianity. You can't be passive and be pleasing to God. Praise the Lord. Y'all still in the house. You got to do like Paul. You got to do some pressing. You got to do some pressing. And this is what Colossians, I'm going to let you go. Colossians chapter 3, verse number 1. Colossians chapter if 3, verse number If you then be risen with he Christ. He says, he's talking about baptism. After you've been baptized, you rise to walk in the newness of life. And he says, if then you have risen with Christ, you have risen with Christ. And he's talking about when you come out of the water. See, that, that baptism is a, symbolizes the gospel, the death, burial, and resurrection of Christ. So when you're baptized, you're baptized in the death of Christ. When you're baptized, you're buried with Christ. And when you're baptized, you rise to walk. The Paul says in Romans 6, in the newness of life. In other words, you don't, you don't go back to the old life. You don't go back to the old self. And what will help, especially me and our young folk, what will help them is that you, you don't hang with them folk out there. It's difficult when you still hanging with the same old crowd. That's difficult. But you need to be start hanging with folk who are pressing toward the high calling, which is in Christ Jesus. And then he says, watch this. Set, seek those things. Seek the things which are above. That are above. Where Christ sits. See the things that are above. See the things that are above. What, what things that are above? Things like prayer, things like praise, things like uh, the Word of God, things like the Holy Spirit. Seeking those things that are above. I know we're seeking a lot of stuff, but are we seeking God's will for our lives? That passage in Matthew 6, 33, it says, 
Seek ye first the kingdom of heaven and his righteousness and all these things shall be added unto you. He actually says, you know, seek first the kingdom of heaven and, and uh, that look, when you seek the things of the kingdom of heaven, you're seeking God's way of doing things. How God, how, how does God do this? How does God want me to do this? I was in my Bible class, it made me less than a little too long, but uh, uh, I was in Bible class and I was sharing share with the Bible class how the kingdom of God operates. So if you don't know how the kingdom of God operates, then you don't know how to operate in the kingdom. And many of us don't know how the kingdom of God operates. It's a spiritual kingdom. We got to operate in a spiritual realm, in a spiritual way. So he's saying to us, if you have risen with Christ, seek those things which are above. Yeah, right. Seek the things. I mean, seeking, seeking, I know eventually you're going to do that, but seeking a, a mate, seeking girlfriend, seeking boyfriend, seeking riches, Seeking job. He said, Seek ye first the kingdom of heaven and its righteousness and all the things that you are seeking will be added unto you. It goes along with the program. Amen. Ain't God good? In spite of us not being good, he's still, still good. That's why we have to keep our children focused in seeking things that are good, that are above. He said, for Christ sitting on the right hand of God. Paul had a determination. And, and uh, to seek the things. He had a high calling. He had a prize that he was going for. Right. It was a heavenly calling. I mean, it was seeking to please God so one day we can be in heaven. Yes, it should be our goal. Yes, and we need to bring that attention. You know, uh, I mentioned about I was in the barber shop. You know, we, we can talk about everything but the things that are important or the things that matter. I don't like to be in a conversation with stuff that doesn't matter and that I can't do nothing about. I don't like to, I don't like to, you know, I, I'm at loss. I'm lost. Who's the best basketball player in the world? I don't know. Cause it doesn't matter. Michael Jordan. It doesn't matter. See, you know, Michael Jordan. Amen. <laughs> who, who, cause there is debate there, is, uh, uh, but ain't no debate. <laughs> but, but the one thing, we, we need to have more conversations about Who's the greatest? That's Jesus. Who can handle your problems? That's Jesus. Who can calm your struggles? That's Jesus. Who can help you in your midnight hour? That's Jesus. Who can help you when you are down and out? That's Jesus. That's that's conversation we need to have more about. Then talk about the church of Christ. Amen. Amen. Invite folk to the church. Invite folk to, to worship Jesus. All this stuff that's going on, they going to be going on after you gone. And the only thing that's really going to matter is whether you're in Christ and you're living a life pleasing him. You can know all the statistics you want them. But, and, but one statistics you're going to be concerned about. Whether or not your name is written in the Lamb Book of Life. 
That's the only thing. Stay on your feet. Stay on, stay on your feet. Paul just had a, a determination. And his condition wasn't ideal, but he was determined. It, 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 it wasn't ideal. He went through a lot of stuff. But he made a decision that he was going to follow the Lord. Do what you want to do, Paul saying. You, you might put me, and they did put him on the chopping block. But, but, but Paul was saying, I'm pressing toward that mark of the high calling which is in Christ Jesus. And I'm not going to allow any distractions. Amen. I'm in prison now, but I'm, I'm, I'm pressing. How many of us are here really, really pressing? Really pressing. We got to, we got to press. We got to press. Uh, don't let, uh, you know, uh, my son, you know, I found uh, last night, late, he come to show, you know, I saw him in a doing them push up. Don't push up. <laughs> Yeah, he doing push up. <laughs> Amen. He was doing the ball, pull it up, pull it up. Amen. And uh, <laughs> he came in. <laughs> he said, Daddy, why you got to tell everything? <laughs> but that's, that's, that's physical, that's what pressing all about. That's, that's physical pressing. And if you want muscles, you got to press. You got to do some pressing. You got to do some push-ups. And it's the same way spiritually. We got to press spiritually. And we're going to have spiritual growth. Add to your faith. Do your diligence. Press. The idea come in your mind that you're going to miss church. Press. By the time you don't feel like praying, press. We don't feel like praising, press. We don't feel like, you know, uh, 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 even going to this job, press. We do that anyway, press. When it comes to spirit thing, we need to press toward the high calling, which is in Christ Jesus. And press and come after you've obeyed the gospel. You heard the gospel and the good news that Christ died for our sins, was buried, rose again the third day. Believe that with all your heart. Then repent of your sins. Confess Christ to be the Son of God. But all that is unto salvation. You have to be baptized into Christ where salvation is. That's not a difficult thing to do. That's one of the things I'm going to point out in my lesson. It's simple. <laughs> a simple faith that cannot be refused. Part of a simple faith that cannot be refused is what when God said it, they did it. When God said it, they heard it. When God said it, they uh, they uh, responded. And so is your uh, opportunity now to give your life to Jesus Christ by coming and giving me your hand, God your heart. We ask you one question: Do you believe that Jesus Christ is the Son of God? That we will baptize you in water. The water is ready. Only question is, are you ready? And you've been away from the church and you haven't been worshiping like you should. We'll pray for you. But what you got to do, you got to be more determined. You can't let any little thing cause you not to obey God. And use a little stuff. Praise the Lord. I, I, I bet some of y'all, y'all had that pain out here. You, you, you know, you would have went on work anyway. On the job. But you used to, uh, come to church, all you got to do is have a sniff. Oh, I'm catching a cold. I can't go out today. <laughs> Temperature a little, a little, you know, low. Oh, it's cold, too cold, too cold. <laughs> but when it comes to that job, you're going to pray, baby. You know why you're going to pray? Because of the benefit. That's why I pray uh, spiritually, because of the benefit. Because of the benefit. So you're here today, and you need to come and give your life to Christ. You need prayer. We're going to do that as we...
Sing. Have you been oh. to Jesus for the cleansing? Sing. Thou will are you washed in the, the blood, blood of the Lamb? Well, are you Please trust in His grace. Well, are you washed in the blood of the Lamb? Oh, and are you washed? God bless you. Well, in the, the blood, blood, blood well, in the soul, cleansing blood, blood of, of the land, land of the land. Of well, the land. are your garments spotless? Are they white as snow? Well, are you washed in the blood of the, of the land? Oh, when are you washed? Are you washed? Well, in the blood. Unless are they white as snow, well are you washed in the blood of the Lamb? Oh, and are you washed? Are you washed in the blood? In the blood, in the soul, cleansing blood of the Lamb, of the Lamb, of the Lamb. Spotless are white as snow. Will are you washed in the blood of the Lamb? Well, and are you washed in the blood, the blood in the soul, cleansing blood of the Lamb? Will are you? Unless are they white as snow, are you washed in the blood of the Lamb? Well, are you walking daily by the Savior's side? Well, are you washed in the blood of the Lamb? Give Brother Pimmon a love deposit, another fine, fine uh, delivery. I'm just, just kind of caught up right there on the zeal, the zeal that Paul showed once he came out of the world, uh, the same zeal that he had while he was in the world. And so uh, thank you, Brother Pimmon, for bringing that out, and, and uh, let's give him another love deposit. <laughs> Standing before you, we, uh, we have Sister uh, Doris Harden. Mr. Harden, she comes. She want uh, uh, to be praying on behalf of the, the Bond family who just had a recent loss, uh, a loved one. And uh, she also want to thank God to see another birthday today. Uh, I thought she was going to call out a number, but she just, today is her birthday. That's what she told me, 71. All right. Uh, so today is her birthday. So to God be the glory. And then uh, Brother Bird. Uh, in the recent storm here, uh, Brother Bert Lightning hit his house, hit his guest house, oh. caught it on fire, uh, oh. bust some pipelines, and, and he just said he has a new respect of uh, <laughs> Lightning and all those things. But uh, Sister Law Gwen was in the guest house, but did no harm come to her. Right. They got the fire out, and uh, he just he just trying to give God the praise and the glory yeah. and all those things. Uh, despite it all, he said they they all right and they gonna be all right. So. Giving God praise. And then uh, Sister Bobby Gray, she comes. Uh, 
she just want to thank God for his grace and his mercy that he's shown toward uh, her and her family. Uh, unfortunate, she say, for her. You know, the family gone on spring break, break but she had to stay here uh, <laughs> for the election. And, uh, and uh, in light of the election, she, she asked me that she, if she could have the mic for uh, 30 seconds. <laughs> Thank you, my brother. Okay, My little Angela Spill is this. Please go vote. A lot of people are not even aware that Tuesday is election day. It's primary election. They're not really advertising. I don't know what's going on. But it is primary election day, and I would like to ask everyone to please do the civic duty and go vote. Amen. We got a new record, a new record. She gave time back. Go ahead, brother. Yeah, you know, she didn't say who to vote for. Just vote. Yeah, we need to vote. People have died for, the, for our right to vote. They, they're trying to take it away from us. Amen. So you can't be passing. You can't be passing. Amen, amen. I want to know that um, I was there trying to do these poll books at 1 o'clock this morning. And the reason my speech is so short, because I got to leave and go back to my office. <laughs> <laughs> oh, well, you did. You did good, and ain't no wrong reason to do the right thing. Amen. Uh, Neil, uh, Brother Charlie, if you got something, come to me. Neil, get ready. While you're doing that, I just want to uh, give testimony to the goodness of God that's not just in my, my physical healing, uh, but uh, also uh, that God, how God takes care of us even when we are not aware of stuff. Uh, neighbor, my neighbor called uh, the gas company and said she had a gas leak at her house. And they came out and didn't find a gas leak at her house, but they found a gas leak at my house. And, uh, uh, so that's that's been from God, you know what's going on, and so uh, when people came out and they fixed the gas leak. They had, to, they had to go inside the house. And thank Bruce for coming in and put my drywall back up. Yeah, they had to do a number of things to make sure that uh, everything was safe. So we just thanking God for stuff we don't even know about what's going on. God still taking care of us in spite of it. And uh, in light of what uh, has already been said, spring break is, is now this week uh, for a lot of the college students. So please be mindful of, uh, of all the college students as they endeavor this, uh, in their endeavors this week. And, and CJ is uh, coming home, I think, today. So uh, keep him in your prayers and uh, for safe travel, uh, getting home. Yeah. I mean, in addition to those, uh, Brother Kai Tucker, he just come asking prayers for the same thing with Brother Carl just mentioned, Traveling Grace, obviously spring break for all of our kids here in Mississippi. So we're asking prayers for Traveling Grace for him and his family. And then uh, also, Sister, let's give him a little applause, give Kai. He always come up and so bold, a lot of courage and confidence to come up. <laughs> Uh, also, Sister Salitra uh, Seal, she's just prayer of Thanksgiving. She just want to thank God for allowing her to be able to purchase her first vehicle uh, on this past week. Let's give God a love deposit. She also wants to uh, personally thank Sister Kayla and Sister Kimberly for being there for her and for helping her and providing her with transportation back and forth to uh, worship services. So let's give them a love deposit. Thank you. Also, Brother Up can come on behalf of uh, the Guyton family, understand that they are home sick, just asking prayers for a speedy recovery and asking God to, to heal them during this time. Let's give it. And then uh, also Sister Angel Williams, she's asking prayers for the Callaway uh, family, the high school, Callaway High School family. They experienced two losses in this past year. On yesterday, they lost uh, one of the, her cheer coaches um, who passed away suddenly on yesterday. So uh, Angel's asking prayers for the Callaway family and also the Callaway cheer team as they lost one of their cheer coaches uh, on yesterday. So let's be praying uh, for her and praying for the Callaway uh, family. All right, let us go to God and pray on their behalf. Heavenly Father, we thank you so much for your grace. We thank you for your mercy. We thank you for your son, Jesus, who came and died on the cross for our sins. We come asking prayers for those that would be traveling uh, during this uh, holiday break, that you would give them traveling grace to their destinations. Pray for those 
uh, that are dealing with various illness, that you would be with them, strengthen them, uh, bless them back to a normal state of health and strength. We pray for those. We thank you for those that come just asking prayers for Thanksgiving, that they're thanking you for and seeing and recognizing uh, you and in the midst of, of their troubles and situations that they're dealing with. And they're also thanking you for all your blessings that you have bestowed upon us. We ask all these blessings in your son Jesus' name we pray. Amen. All right. Yes, before we get into those announcements, I, I, I forgot to uh, mention, uh, some, of, some of you all know uh, Cheryl Reese, uh, I mean, uh, from years, years ago, sure. She had to have a, a dentist, she, you know, went to dental school, she was practicing up in Tennessee, and uh, Lisa uh, called, she called Lisa and, and covered some things that were going on with her. Uh, she had had a, a heart transplant and I believe a kidney transplant. Is that right? Right. Yeah, heart transplant and a kidney transplant. She's at home out of the hospital, but uh, she's having uh, some financial problems. And so we, we're going to help her the way we, we can. All of us know she grew up here and moved away. And uh, I'm also going to send us some. My uh, my health pack, you know, confession that you're making dealing with your, you know, sickness and illness, that spiritual approach to it. But uh, she asked for, for us to be in prayer for her, that uh, that the kidney would, would not uh, fail, and that, that whatever they did in reference to the heart, heart replacement would, would be beneficial. Amen. Certainly will be in prayer for her. Uh, at this time, we're going to recognize those that are in our audience that are visiting with us today. We certainly want you to know you're indeed uh, guests, and we're happy to have you here at the Hanging Moss Road Church of Christ. I do not have any visitor card, but if, we, if you are visiting with us today, if you would just stand and uh, state your name and let us see who you are. Let us give you a warm Hanging Moss uh, welcome. Are there any uh, visiting with us on today? If you would just stand and state your name. All right, seeing that there's none, let's give all of our guests a low deposit. Thank you for choosing to be with us on today. All right, just in the way of announcement, just two quick announcements and we'll be dismissed. Ladies Bible class will be next Sunday at five o'clock p.m. Uh, via Zoom. Um, and the facilitator will be Sister Lucretia Nichols. And the topic is March 4th. At first, when Sister Benefield gave me this, I thought I was reading it wrong. I said, March 4th, that's already passed. <laughs> well, that's the topic. I like it. March 4th, Sister uh, Lucretia Nichols. So ladies, next Sunday, 5 o'clock via Zoom. Be mindful uh, of that. So we'll make sure you participate in that. Also, be mindful of uh, two weeks away, our youth and young adult weekend. We're looking forward to having a great, great time in the Lord uh, in two weeks, March 23rd. To that note, parents, if you would just stay about five minutes uh, after worship service and also young adults, if you're in between the age of 18 and 45, if you would just stay five minutes, it'll take me five, 10 minutes max after worship service on today. Uh, if there'll be nothing else. Okay. Oh, that's right. Yeah, I forgot. But uh, Adrian is traveling to ask some prayers for traveling. Grace will be praying for him as he travels. So. We're, we're asking traveling grace. Uh, God's Love Bank seminar will be leaving uh, on Wednesday. And some of the asked me when, when, what time. We're going to try to leave out of here at about 4 o'clock in the morning. And uh, I just kid, y'all. I repent. <laughs> I, I just want to get away. <laughs> but 8 o'clock, 8 o'clock, we'll be leaving immediately. <laughs> and uh, it will be in Dallas, Texas. Uh, no, yeah. we won't have more. I will not have a Wednesday morning class, and uh, my class will not meet on Wednesday night. So you, you can still be on the other adult class. Thank you for reminding us. Let us be standing. All right, let us close out. May the grace of God rest, rule, and abide in our hearts in the sweet communion of the Holy Spirit. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen.